Let's bundle a self-running Uber jar using the Maven Shade plugin. We'll start by generating a Maven project using the Quick Start archetype. It creates a simple project with a pom.xml file and a Hello World main class. I have a video linked here if you'd like an explanation of what's going on with all the parameters. Running the script creates a project called jwcreate that contains our project code. Let's cd into that and run dir. There's our pom file and our source directory. Let's edit our code using VS Code. I'll run code space dot to work on the current project. Let's open the pom.xml file. We want to make a few changes here. I'm using Java 17, so I want to set the Maven compiler source to be 17, as well as the Maven compiler target. Let's take a look at our main application, app.java. This prints out a simple hello world message. Let's open up the terminal by pressing Ctrl J. From there, let's run Maven clean package. It takes just a moment to compile and package our code. Let's cd into the target directory. From there, we can see our jar file was created for our project. So let's run that. We'll type in java-cp for class path, the name of the jar file, and then the fully qualified name of the class where our main method is located com.beginsecure.jotcreate.app. And in our output, we get the message hello world. So our code is working. Let's close that of the terminal and go back to our POM file. Now we're going to make a few changes to make our code more interesting. We'll add a third party dependency to allow us to create a jot and output it to the console. A jot, spelled J W T, but usually pronounced jot, is an abbreviation for JSON Web Token. It's part of an open standard for transmitting information between parties as a JSON object. The information often includes claims about an entity such as the user ID and are signed using a secret key. The result is then encoded and transmitted from one party to another. Our group ID will be com.auth0 and our artifact will be maven-jot and the version will be 4.3.0. There are several other jot libraries available but this is one of the most popular. Now let's go back to our main application and write some code to use the library. We'll get rid of the whole world print line method. First thing we'll do here is we're going to read our input from the command line. So let's check to make sure that we're supplied with arguments. This is not production grade code by any stretch of the imagination, but it will get us through a quick test here. We'll check to see if the number of arguments does not equal three, if that's true, then we'll print a message with a usage statement. Asking that we're passed on the command line a secret key, a user ID, and a username. These three components will be used to generate and sign our jot. And if we fail to get our three arguments, we'll exit with a status code of one. Now, assuming that we pass the test and get the data we require, let's assign the three arguments to variables. Arg sub zero will be assigned to secret, Arg sub 1 will be assigned to user ID, and Arg sub 2 will be assigned to username. Next, we'll create a map object of key value pairs called payload. Using map.of, we'll initialize the payload map with the key value pairs. The string user ID and the user ID argument we read, and the string username and the username argument we read. Now let's add our import statements for Java Util map. Next, we'll use the jot library we imported. We'll declare a variable called builder of type jotcreator.builder, and we'll initialize that by calling jot.create. And we'll add our payload with the claim method. It will be a key value pair again, the string data, and our payload we created in the line above. And we'll set an expiration time for our jot. Jots typically have a very short expiration time. We'll create a date object using the current time and add 60 times 1000 times 60 milliseconds. This means our jot will be good for one hour from the time it's created. Let's fix our import statement for Java util date. We're almost done with coding. We'll create a string variable called jot. And using the sign method of the builder object, we'll use the HMAC or hash based message authentication code algorithm along with the secret key that was passed in to sign the jot. And on the last line, we use system out printf to print a string, generate jot, along with the string and a new line to print out the jot value to standard out. Now let's go back to the command line. 
We'll go up one level to where the POM is located and type in Maven clean package once again. Our code compiles and we generate a snapshot file. Let's go to the target directory and run DIR. Hmm, the jar file is awfully small. Let's try running it though. We'll run it with java-cp, then the fully qualified name of our app where our main method is located. And we'll pass in three arguments. Secret, 101 for the user ID, and john.do for our username. Let's run that. And we get an error. We can see the message, no class def found error, and a reference to our third party JOT library. So our snapshot.jar file doesn't contain the dependency we need. So now let's fix that and add the dependency to our jar file. To do that, we'll go back to our POM file, and underneath where our dependency section is, let's add a new section called build. Within build, we'll add another section called plugins, and within there, we'll add a singular plugin. This plugin will be the Maven Shade plugin that we'll use in our project. And within there, we'll add a group ID. A group for the plugin we'll be adding is org.apache.maven-plugins, and our artifact ID will be maven-shade-plugin, and our version will be 3.5.1. Next, we'll need to add another block called executions, and within there, we'll add a singular execution, and within there, we'll add a phase. Phase specifies the build phase at which the execution will occur. In our case, we'll add package, which means this plugin will run whenever we execute Maven package. And next, we'll add goals, and then a singular goal, and our goal will be shade. The shade goal is used to create the Uber jar or fat jar that contains the project dependencies and can also be used to create a standalone executable jar. Now let's go back to the command line by pressing Control J. We'll CD up one level and run Maven clean package once again. Our build is successful. Let's go back to the target directory once again and run DIR. Notice our jar is much larger now. So let's run our command again, including all the arguments. And there we go, we get our jot output. So at this point, we have an Uber jar with all our dependencies and the custom code we wrote, but is it a self-running jar? Let's try to run the whole thing now as a self-running jar. We'll get rid of our fully qualified application name, and we'll change CP to dash jar and try to run it. And we get no manifest attribute, meaning Java couldn't figure out where the main method is in our application. So we need to make one more change to make it a self-running jar. Let's go back to the POM file. And under goals, where we left off just a moment ago, let's add a configuration section. Don't worry if you miss some of the changes in the POM file. I'll post this code on GitHub and add a link in the description so you can clone it yourself. Within the configuration block, let's add another section called transformers and we'll add a singular transformer. Transformers are components that modify the contents of the final jar created by the shade plugin. And in our transformer section, we'll add implementation equals org.apache.maven-plugins.shade-resource.manifest-resource-transformer. And within there, we'll add one more section called main class. In the main class section, we'll add in the fully qualified name of our main class, which is com.beginsecure, dot jot create dot app. This will set the main class attribute in the jars manifest. Now let's go back to the command line one last time. Go up one directory, run maven clean package once again. Our build is successful. Let's see the end of the target directory. Run dir. Now let's run our command once again as a self-running jar with no explicit call to the class where our main method is located. And there we go. We can see our jot value is output. So now you know how to create a self-running Uber jar using the Shade plugin. That's all for this time. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up below. Thanks for watching, and remember to always begin secure.